Hey, you guys know Harrison Bucker? Is he the highest paid kicker in the league now? He's the yes, highest he paid kicker ever, I ever. believe, my friend. Is every new oh, yeah. deal is like the newest Yeah, exactly. Ever. But yeah, it's not true. ever, though. Like I think we sometimes think every single con- every player is, is breaks the bank. It's not true. We're just hearing of these all these players that break the bank. There's 50 other players, 45 other players on these teams that aren't getting paid billion or, you know, aren't breaking the bank and making these – astronomical contract so like we hear about all the ones that are the highest paid ever but Harrison Bucker we see this new deal Chiefs are signing standout kicker Harrison Bucker four year 25.6 million as a kicker wow I think APY what is it six six and a half a year 17.75 million dollars guaranteed the deal ties Bucker to Casey through the 2028 season yeah negotiated himself on the end there so he hasn't he doesn't have an agent uh no do you think he had a lawyer look it over yeah, for sure. I mean, it's smart. If you're, you can hire, if you're well, a kicker, how's like, it work if you to negotiate a contract? You technically are supposed to use an agent that is like certified through the NFLPA, right? Bingo. Mm-hmm. But I know guys that don't. They say, "Hey, I'm just going to hire a lawyer and pay him hourly to do my deal." That yeah, that's Caleb. Caleb. Deal. Caleb. Yeah. Are there Caleb so Williams. are there lawyers? There's got to be just a lawyer that's certified through the PA. Then I'm guessing. It, right? it's, I don't know. But we got caught you're up right. in it kind of with we Caleb did. Williams, and it, it kind of became some mumbo jumbo. They tried to make it out that he yep. was lying about something, and they weren't being forth forthright about something. But uh, if you're in this position, even with Caleb, you're the top pick. Like you kind of know what the deal Slotted is going to be. You work through some different things. Harrison Butker, hey, I'm, I'm one of the best kickers out here. Obviously, you got Justin Tucker out here, but outside of him. Butker is probably in that conversation. So, hey, this is what the numbers are. This is where we need to be. And obviously, the Chiefs got it done. Another, you know, another thing that they secured going into this season, got the kicker, obviously, the offense, the defense, everything's in line for them to make another run at the Lombo. D, but does that, so everything that's going on with the Chiefs, does that almost worry you that things seem like they're going too well? Like, thing here, and especially, let's say, I don't know, do they have a plan if old Patty Mahomes is going to play in the preseason at all? I do Oh, hey, he's played. I was going to say, yeah, I feel like Reed they typically play, plays. Right? Yeah, he typically plays. like a whole like what if first come, half, I what think. What if he like comes that. out and just lights up? I know we had that uh, at one point. I forget. I mean, probably any year that Aaron ever played in the preseason when I was with the Packers, there was – maybe it was right after the lockout or right after the Super Bowl year, Aaron played in the preseason games, mm-hmm. and he was – like, I don't know if he had an incomplete pass all preseason. He was on fire. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, this – like – can it even get much better than this? And I think he might have won the MVP. He won the MVP. That year. Yeah, he won the MVP. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, for a second, I'm like, man, this guy is on fire even more than normal. And I feel like with the Chiefs, it's like everything is all positive, arrow going up, here we go, everything's going great. Like, do they need some adversity? I, uh, you know what? That 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 team, that organization, they've dealt with so much off the field. You Andy know, obviously, has, obviously bad. Andy Reid's a Zen mat. He's it, like a. He, they just figured it out. You know, obviously, it's a bunch of bad shit they've dealt with, but also even like the Taylor Swift thing, like outside, like to be able to deal with that. We always talk about outside outside noise, distractions. I felt like they handled that great, and and obviously they went on to make a run and got hot when they needed to get hot. Things weren't going great during the season. That's probably why he wasn't voted as the top player um, in the NFL last season. But obviously, they figured out. So I can't doubt this team. There's too many pieces coming back. You got Chris Jones. You got Spags still calling the defense. You got McDuffie. You got all these offensive weapons. And then they go out and get worthy. I'm hearing Hollywood Brown is tearing up camp as well. Mm-hmm. So, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be a fool and, and, and doubt these guys at all. That's what, like the adversity they face is just like during the season because the expectations are so ho- so high. Like I feel like there hasn't been a team since like those old Patriots where it was like, oh, these guys can just coast till December. Like yeah. they might be like five and six or whatever, and then they'll turn it on when it matters. Like it was it was last year when they they went to Lambeau on Monday night, and I think the Packers yep. were five and six. It was in like late November or, or sometime around there and they got beat and everyone was saying you know like oh well this is finally the year over. yeah the run is over. yeah exactly and then boom right after that right. they hit the ground running and and make it it's like they they are one of those few teams that can actually be like all right let's flip the switch right now let's turn it on now it matters like let's go so like they you know the expectation it isn't necessarily that they're going to go undefeated, but we we just assume that they're going to beat the shit out of whoever they're playing every week. So like when they don't look great or the offense is a little clunky or a little choppy, like people act like it's their downfall. So like they deal with that, and then when it matters, they understand what they have to do. Yeah, like Christmas last year. Yeah, I mean Mahomes threw two pick sixes, right. and everyone was like, "Oh man, this is it." But the biggest question was, "Oh, this team's never." You know, played a playoff game on the road. Yeah, like yeah, that was the yeah. whole entire storyline last year going into the playoffs. And then playoffs. they went down and they threw old Justin Tucker's gear, right? 
Yeah, bingo. Yeah. That, that was that, in, in the warm-ups. title game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but in the week before, they beat the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. Right. You know, in the underdogs freezer, in the cold. Yeah, as dogs because Bass m- missed that kick at the end. But they've answered every question. Like it is now the old Patriots teams. Like, yep, they're going to be in it at the end. We don't really. Ha- if you're a Chiefs fan, you are officially in. Like, hey, our season doesn't start till yeah. January now because that is when. <laughs> is that? Did you like that? I mean, you had that for forever, your whole life. In New uh, I it, mean, you like it, but also at the same time, like, man, can I just enjoy a victory like in October? The, part of that. I mean, honestly, the biggest thing as a Patriots fan who has now had to transition into this new era of uh, Patriots fandom is like the week one. You know, like I, before, uh, le- legitimately, and I'm not kidding, until I was 24 years old. You're like, what, 26 now? Uh, 29. (laughs) Until I was like 24 years old, week one didn't matter once. There was never a time in September where I was like, Boy, we better hope that this. So game now you're saying hey, we need around. to get out to a hot start. Well, now, not, you're like, now are you nervous leading up to Week One? Yeah, exactly. It's not even like, hey, need to get out to a hot start. It's like I, I need to see who who we are gonna be. Like who and are the Patriots? Post Belichick, bingo. Too. Now, like, what are they? Now it's even more so because like right after Tom was Cam Newton. So like Week One, it was like, all right, this is a whole different team. Like yeah. our offense is gonna look different. That was during COVID. Correct? That was that was the COVID year, and then you know Year Two was Mac Jones' rookie year, and that's the biggest thing, especially with Drake May. Now it's like after the first year of Mac Jones, everybody in New England, I think kind of everybody in general was like, oh, they're going to be fine because they found the next guy and it's Mac Jones and he he's a good player. After his rookie year, that was absolutely the case. He came in second in rookie of the year voting. He was actually go- he was the favorite to win rookie of the year basically the entire regular season until Jamar Chase had like three touchdowns against the Chiefs later on for the Bengals. And that was the year the Bengals ended up going to the Super Bowl, too. So made more sense. But even then, like so much can change. Like year two and year three, we saw what happened. With Mac Jones, obviously, we drafted Drake. Yeah, what happened? Number three over. I mean, Matt Patricia was the OC. Yeah. And Josh McDaniels <laughs> left. That's kind of that kind of is what happened. Yeah. And then by then, the case was out on him because like all that, you know, him being a dirty player, twisting ankles and stuff. Kicking, pit, kicking dongs, kick, kicking all that stuff. Like Patriots fans didn't care about that because we were winning. So it's like, yeah. hey man, thought he was good. Do your thing, yeah. And and he was like, he bro, he, he had the highest completion percentage in the history of the NFL for a rookie quarterback. Like for the most part, people were pretty sold on Mac Jones. But then once McDaniel's left, you, you, you talk about that continuity when it comes to yeah. young quarterbacks and what Saban just said about Caleb Williams and development. Like his development stopped. Mac Jones is as far as getting better in the same system because. That is the biggest thing, and that is the other thing about these rookie guys is, and I mean, C.J. Stroud is going to have to do it again. As good as you can be your rookie year, and I expect C.J. Stroud to be good. I'm not saying that he won't be. I'm just saying more so like, hey, it can flip so fast. Dayball has said it. You know, you go from Bozo or Bono to Bozo, (laughs) whatever the hell it is, and there's that same outhouse to penthouse, penthouse to outhouse, whatever the hell it is. Like, it can change so damn fast in the NFL, but at quarterback specifically. Like, yeah. if you aren't good for, what, your first three, four years, like, people are going to say, like, ah, yeah, but, I mean, we're doing it with Trevor Lawrence. 